Hey guys, I am Dr. Shireen Idris, a cosmetic dermatologist. <laughs> that is the doorbell. That is the doorbell. <laughs> My daughter just changed it. I'm back in New York City. Please hold, let me go open the door. I'm back. So, happy Saturday. I am currently in New York City. I am Shireen Idris. I think I just said that earlier, but I'm a dermatologist here in the city. I'm gonna speak to you guys today about rice water. I have spoken about it on Instagram and got in a lot of questions. So I figured I'd do a quick demo and explain to you guys how I came across the whole white water trend, I guess. And uh, I didn't realize it was a trend until I learned about it and sort of explain a little bit the science behind it and how to do it. I was introduced to rice water through my best friend. Her name is Uba. Uba is a Somalian beauty. Okay, and you guys are gonna meet her today through this video. So let's jump in. So rice water, also known as Yusuru, um, has been around for ages and ages and ages and ages. It's an age old skincare ingredient and hair care ingredient dating back to Japanese culture in the Haiyan, I don't know if I just butchered that, H-E-I-A-N period from like the 700s to the 1100s. There's also a village in China, the Yao women, who also rinse their hair with rice water and they've been winning the Guinness Book of World Records of having the longest, thickest, healthiest hair. Um, so they use um, fermented rice water. And this got me thinking, you know, not everything new is great, but everything that's been old and consistently used throughout time must have some basis, even though the evidence is very much anecdotal. In 2010, in the Journal of Cosmetic Chemists, they had an article that summarizes the benefits of using rice water. And according to this article, because of the presence of inositol in the rice water, there is decreased hair friction and increased hair elasticity that results in healthier, shinier hair the benefits. So it is rich in various things. Number one, it is rich in starch and the starch itself coats your hair to give that instant appearance of increased fullness. And I will tell you from firsthand experience, I have definitely witnessed that. Number two, it is also rich in antioxidants, vitamin B and vitamin E, which is very helpful for your hair to fight free radical damage, which can contribute to split ends, dullness, breakage, etc. Number three, it is also rich in amino acids and minerals, amino acids being the building blocks of protein, which can definitely help with hair health to support firmer, healthier hair and to strengthen your hair strands. Number four, like I mentioned earlier, it's rich in inositol, um, which is a um, byproduct that helps to decrease friction and increase elasticity of your hair. And interestingly, one study in Food and Nutrition Research has found that the rice bran matrix, which is sort of what coats the rice itself, which comes into the rice water, is rich in linoleic acid and gamma orizinol. I am butchering these words, but uh, yeah, linoleic acid and gamma orizinol, which help to decrease inflammation, especially on your scalp around your hair follicles and increase the hair growth phase known as anagen phase of your hair so you can have longer, fuller hair. I haven't fully experienced that yet because I haven't been doing this that long, but you know what? Anecdotally, the evidence is there. Research is pointing in that direction, so I'm gonna give it a shot. The biggest negatives though, and I have to say this, is if you have very dry, brittle, curly, frizzy, low porosity hair, you have to be a little bit careful because if you overdo it, you can actually get hair breakage. And that's almost like everything in life. Too much of a good thing is just too much. And so moderation and trying to find your balance is key. And Uba herself has experienced that because she went buck wild wrong and strong and she started to experience the hair breakage. So she told me, if you're gonna do this, slow it down. So I would recommend starting out, do it once or twice a month at most to see how your hair responds to it. And if you have hair that can take it, then once a week is probably fine. But if you have very dry, brittle, curly, frizzy hair, less is probably gonna do more for you in the long run. So once or twice a month at most and be a little bit careful because even though it is natural, even though it is a do-it-yourself home remedy, you can have some side effects from it. 
Um, and the reason that happens is because your hair goes into protein overload and the protein itself can cause the crisping and the brittleness of your hair as well, even though it does give stronger, firmer hair. If you don't have that density of hair, if your hair has low porosity and the cuticle is um, very, very, very firm and unable to absorb what's coming in, it can sit on the hair shaft, causing it to break over time. So just something for you guys to be aware of. How do we then create this rice water? I'm gonna take you guys through a step-by-step -step and towards the end of the video, and maybe I'll repost it as its own video so you guys can just turn back to that without hearing the whole history of it, um, of how do you ferment rice water? My personal contribution to this age-old uh, ingredient for hair and scare is using a French press machine device, whatever you want to call it, um, because I don't really drink coffee that much, but I thought to myself, what if we steeped it in the French press, and then when you press it down, you'll then have just the water, which is easily separated from the rice without having little bits of rice everywhere. So I use a French press, and I mix probably half a cup of rice to maybe a cup and a half of water. And I let that sit for 12 to 24 hours at room temperature. Mind you, I make sure to wash the rice before because you wanna get rid of any sort of little kind of um, bacteria or little parasite within the rice because rice is not clean when you buy it. You have to just wash it once. So I rinse the rice once to get rid of all of that stuff. And then I let it sit. And this is the fermentation process. I don't let it sit for more than 24 hours because it can get quite pungent and stinky. Although I kind of like the smell of the rice, I'm not gonna lie, it reminds me growing up of cooking rice. But you know, to each their own. Um, also, you wanna be able to reuse the rice. So I actually, after I'm done soaking it, after 24 hours, I separate the rice and I cook it and I use it for dinner because why not? Why am I gonna waste it? White rice is better than brown rice. The starcher the rice, the better. I use long grain basmati rice in my personal cooking and it's actually really good for this. So that's sort of what I use. Um, should I use rice water? Anecdotally, the evidence is there. Research is finally catching up to the trend. And I would say it's definitely worth a shot and a try because it doesn't hurt and the ingredients are most likely in your home. All I would say is make sure you're using the rice, don't waste it. You know, we're trying to just be more cognizant and aware of what we're using in our lives. I will say approach just a little bit with caution so that you don't overdo it. And finally, have fun, have fun with it, experiment. It's totally fine. It's one of these at home remedies that I am totally for because there's so little waste to it. And you're not just throwing away a $7 avocado that you're using for a face mask. So yeah. On that note, I am Dr. Shireen Idris. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and the quick demo. Have a great Saturday.